Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another modern gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Grixis Urza, an artifact based combo deck built around Urza, Lord High Artificer, one of the new cards from Modern Horizons. 4 mana for a 1 4 legendary creature that when it enters a battlefield makes a construct token, so an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts we control. And then we can also tap an untapped artifact we control to add blue mana to our mana pool. Important to note is that this ability appears on Urza itself and not on the artifact. So even if the artifact has summoning sickness, we can tap it for blue mana right away. So we can even tap the construct token for blue mana right away. And then for 5 mana we can shuffle our library, exile the top card, and until end of turn we can play that card from exile without paying its mana cost. So it gives us a nice little mana sink. So the main combo in this deck involves Urza, as well as Thopter Foundry and Sword of the Meek. So some of you might already know this Sword of the Meek plus Thopter Foundry combo, which is pretty straightforward. Thopter Foundry is a 2 mana artifact. For 1 mana we can sacrifice a non-token artifact to make a 1-1 one, one blue Thopter artifact creature token with flying, and we also gain 1 life. Then the second half of the combo is Sword of the Meek, which is a 2 mana equipment, and whenever a 1-1 one, one creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can return Sword of the Meek from our graveyard to the battlefield attached to that creature. So the way the combo works, if we just have Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry in play, we sacrifice Sword of the Meek to the Thopter Foundry, Sword of the Meek goes to the graveyard, we get a 1-1 Thopter token, we gain 1 life, and the Sword of the Meek in the graveyard sees the 1-1 token come into play, and returns from the graveyard attached to the 1-1 Thopter, and we're basically up 1 life and up 1 Thopter token for 1 mana, so for each mana we have we get to make a 1-1 token and gain a life, so that's already pretty good in a grindy matchup. But now if we introduce Urza to this combo we can take it to the next level because Urza lets us generate infinite mana with this combo because when Sword of the Meek returns from the graveyard it comes into play untapped so we can tap it making blue mana thanks to Urza and the Thopter token we make also comes into play untapped so that also makes one blue mana. So with the two mana we generate we can sink one mana into activating the Thopter Foundry to keep the combo going so we basically net one blue mana with each iteration of the loop so we get to make infinite mana, we gain infinite life from the Thopter Foundry and we also get to make infinite Thopter tokens, but that's not enough because Urza also has another ability for 5 mana. So once we make infinite mana, Urza lets us cast our entire deck using its last ability. And once we cast our entire deck, it's not too difficult to win the game. One way to do it is to find a time sieve, which lets us sacrifice 5 artifacts we control to take an extra turn. So if we have enough mana with the Thopter, Foundry and Sword of the Meek combo, and also introduce time sieve, that's another way to just take infinite turns even without Urza, if we can make enough Thopter tokens in each turn, but with Urza that uh, makes infinite mana, of course, it's a lot easier to find a time sieve and assemble that combo as well. So yeah, that's kind of how the deck functions. You can potentially even replace the time sieve with a scrap trawler, and then scrap trawler plus a uh, pyrite spell bomb can also deal infinite damage. That's another way to do it as well. But in this version, we're going for the infinite turns instead, which maybe isn't as optimal as a scrap trawler, but is a little bit sweeter. So yeah, that's the main combo in the deck. Then of course we've got a whole bunch of other things going on in this deck, one of them being Goblin Engineer, which for 2 mana is a 1-2. When it enters battlefield we can search our library for an artifact card and put it into our graveyard. And then for 1 red mana, tapping the Goblin Engineer and sacrificing an artifact, we can return target artifact with convert mana cost 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So just by playing the Goblin Engineer we can put a Sword of the Meek in the graveyard, which is where we want a Sword of the Meek to be in the first place, so we can get it back once we get Thopter Foundry going. And we can also use Goblin Engineer to return combo pieces from the graveyard back into play to help us assemble the Thopter Sword combo. And there's a whole bunch of utility artifacts in the deck as well that we can search up with the Goblin Engineer, or we can search them up with Whir of Invention, which is another part of this deck. X and Triple Blue for an instant that has Improvise, so we can tap any number of untapped artifacts we control to help us pay for the X in the mana cost. And then we can search our library for an artifact card with convert mana cost X or less and put it on the battlefield. So that's another way for us to assemble the combo or to find those silver bullet artifacts that we have sprinkled in the main deck and in the sideboard as well. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck that we haven't covered yet. We've got a bunch of zero mana artifacts including Mishra's Bauble that helps us cantrip, that also provides a cheap artifact in play to maybe enable Metalcraft for Mox Opal which then taps for one mana of any color, which is another big part of any artifact deck in modern. 
At 1 mana we've got 4 copies of Arkham's Astrolabe, which is enabled thanks to all the snow lands in our mana base, so we just need a single snow mana from any of our snow-covered basics to help us cast the Astrolabe, and when it enters the battlefield it draws a card, and then it also helps us fix our mana, but just being a cheap artifact that cantrips helps us enable Metalcraft, and we can later sacrifice it to various effects for value, means that it's a pretty useful card in this deck. And then we have one copy of Pirate Spellbomb, which we can search up to deal 2 damage to any target, and otherwise it just cantrips. We also have a Pithing Needle as another silver bullet that can maybe help us shut down Planeswalkers. And then we've got two copies of Nile Spellbomb as another cantripping artifact that can also clean up the opponent's graveyard, and one copy of Gravedigger's Cage as another silver bullet graveyard hate card that we can search up. Then at 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Ikor Wellspring as a nice artifact that draws a card when it enters the battlefield, and draws a card when it goes to the graveyard, so this is a nice one to sacrifice to our various effects, like Goblin Engineer or the Thopter Foundry. So this shines in the grinding matchups where we can maybe loop it back and forth with an Arkham's Astrolabe from the graveyard using Goblin Engineer to get ahead on cards. We also have two copies of Mindstone to help us ramp, and we can also just sacrifice it to draw a card. Then we've got our three Engineers, one Time Sieve, two copies of Sword of the Meek in case the opponent deals with the first one out of the graveyard somehow, and three copies of Thopter Foundry. And then we have one more Silver Bullet Artifact to search up an Ensnaring Bridge to help us shut down opposing creature decks, and we can pretty easily make sure to have one card in our hand if we ever want to attack with our Thopter Tokens, which we can make with Thopter Foundry or with Sai Master Thopterist, which is another nice grindy card in the more mid-range and control matchups, where we get to make a 1-1 Thopter token whenever we cast an artifact with Sai in play, and can also help us draw additional cards. And then of course we've got the full playset of Urza, Lord High Artificer, which is a main build around in the deck, and our three copies of War of Invention. And then taking a look at our mana base, we've got one utility land here in Inventor's Fair, which can gain a bit of life if we've got enough artifacts in play, and we can also sacrifice it to search up any artifact in our deck to help us assemble the combo. Then we have two fast lands, one Dark Slick Shores, and one Spiral of Canal, alongside a whole bunch of fetch lands, three Polluted Delta, two Prismatic Vista, which can search up any of our snow-covered basics, and three Scalding Tarns, which can search up our five copies of snow-covered island, and we've got one snow-covered mountain and one snow-covered swamp, alongside one steam vents and one watery grave, which we can search up with our regular fetch lands as well. Then taking a look at our sideboard, we've got two copies of Ceremonious Rejection against any of the colorless decks, two Galvanic Blasts as more cheap removal, one Diamond Sphere, which can come in against Tron decks, Storm decks, and maybe even the Blue Red Phoenix deck. Then we've got two copies of Dead of Winter as a nice sweeper effect that counts as snow permanence we control, so it counts our snow covered basics as well as our Arkham's Astrolabes. We also have a single copy of Gerber Ether Grid, which can help us deal with low toughness creatures, as well as giving us an alternate win condition in case the opponent has a Stony Silence effect in play. We also have a single Witchbane Orb, which we can search up with our War of Invention as well to help against burn decks and shut down potential combo decks like the Valakut Scapeshift decks. We've got four copies of Leyline of the Void as our Graveyard Hate of Choice, and two copies of Tezzeret Agent of Bolas, which also gives us an alternate win condition, can provide card advantage with the plus one, can turn an artifact into a 5-5 with the minus one, and the minus four can also deal a ton of damage. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty landlight hand, but we do have all the combo pieces we need, so I think we'll keep. We've got a Mishra's Bobble to Cantrip, we're on the draw. Hopefully we'll pick up a second land. Turn 1 Inquisition, so could disrupt our combo by taking the Thopter Foundry, for example. Could take the Mishra's Bobble to maybe Mana Screw us. Could take maybe even the Psy as a nice value card if they're playing a more mid rangey deck. There's a lot of options here, and it kind of depends how the opponent's hand lines up against ours. Takes the Foundry. Of course, we could still get it back using the Goblin Engineer at some point. So we'll play the Bobble. And since we're playing against the deck with Discard, we don't want to sag the Bobble right now. The question is, do I want to play the Mox Opal? If they have more Discards, we might want the Mox Opal in play. Although we also might want to save it until after we play Psy, so I think I keep it in hand for now. And then in the opponent's upkeep, I will sag the bobble, targeting the opponent to get a little bit of information, but so the card from the bobble doesn't go into our hands for them to potentially discard. Alright, Bloodbraid Elf on top, so our opponent's on Jund. Gets Overgrown Tomb. And a Tarmogoyf, which is already a 3-4 here. So we'll draw from bobble. 
land and engineer. So we can't actually cast the engineer right now, sadly. I guess we'll just cast the sword. And I'll still keep the Mox Opal in hand in case we pick up a third land. So we get to make a Thopter with Psy. Tarmogoyf gets him for three. And Thoughtseize could go after Psy here. Makes the most sense, I think. So we're left with a couple engineers. Mishra's Bobble means the Mox Opal can now make red mana at least. So we'll play the Mox Opal. Play Bobble. So I could float red mana, take a look at the top of my deck with Bobble to see if I want to shuffle. But then the problem is I can no longer play Engineer next turn if we already sacrifice the Bobble. So I think we'll just play Engineer and then not sacrifice the Bobble yet since we might need the extra artifact in play. And then what do we get with the Engineer is a question. We already have a sword in play. Already have a foundry in the graveyard, so we might just want to get like an Icar Wellspring to draw a few additional cards. And then we can use Engineer, maybe sacrifice Bobble, get Wellspring, draw some additional cards that way. So Thermogov gets in for four. If they cast the Thoughtseize pre-combat last turn, they also could have gotten in one more damage by taking the Psy. And a second Goyf, all right. So your opponent seems to be stuck on two lands. Still don't think we want to sack Bobble since we need the red mana from the Mox here. Mindstone, not bad. So as it stands, we could assemble the Sword plus Thopter combo here, which is pretty decent against the Stormogoyfs. And I guess we can play the Mindstone first as well if we want to. So let's do that. And then probably just sack the Sword itself. To the engineer, getting back foundry. And then I guess we'll make our first uh, Thopter here to get the sword back. Sacrificing probably just a bobble. And get back sword. All right, so I've got the Thopter sword combo going here. Of course, Jun's going to have plenty of ways to deal with the Thopter Foundry itself, but the Engineer can always get it back. So now we're just an Urza away from infinite mana. The Thermogoyf's attack. Now we could jump. That seems worth it to save a bit of life. We still know about that Bloodbraid Elf in hand. Point's going to Fatal Push the Engineer. That's okay. Steam vents a draw, so do we even bother playing the Engineer or do we just make a bunch of Thopters is a question. I kind of like making a bunch of Thopters instead, since the Engineer doesn't necessarily help with anything unless they were to destroy the Foundry, in which case the Engineer can potentially get it back. So there is some upside to getting the second Engineer in play. Worm of Invention could also go after like an Ensnaring Bridge, for example, to stop these Tarmogoyfs from attacking. But at the moment the uh, Foundry does a good job of preventing the Goyfs from getting in too much damage. So we might want to save Wur in case of an emergency if we need to like get a Pithing Needle to stop a Liliana, for example. So I guess I play the Steam Vents untapped and just make a bunch of Thopters right now in case they pick up removal for the Foundry. So let's make some mana. Sack the Sword. And I guess next turn, if they don't deal with any of the combo pieces in play, we could just get a Time Sieve with the Wur of Invention and just take infinite turns. That works as well. The Goyf's attack. Still gonna chum both, I think. Should have plenty of artifacts for the Time Sieve combo still. And there's gonna be Assassin's Trophy on the Foundry itself. Fair enough. So that'll work. So now we can just whir for another Foundry instead. Guess I'll just get an Islands. And a Blackleaf Cliffs as well. All right. All right, there's Urza. So I think that means we can assemble all the combo pieces now. So let's start by playing Urza. And the only interaction our opponent could have is Fatal Push or Lightning Bolt here. So seems pretty safe to go for it. So 
So x equals 2. And get our foundry. And now we can keep going off. So we'll sag the sword. Make some blue mana. Sag sword again. And we've got infinite mana, infinite life, and infinite tokens here. It's just gonna take a while to go through the motions. Let's use Urza's ability for the first time here, see what we get. Arkham's Astrolabe. Can play Wellspring. Haven't played a land yet. I guess we'll keep comboing for now. Just make sure we have lethal next turn with all the Thopters in play. Another Astrolabe on top with Urza. Fine Scalding Tarn. But yeah, opponent could basically pack it up at this point. It's a bit easier in paper where you can just uh, go through the motions a bit faster. Alright, I guess we'll just pass a turn for now. Should have lethal next turn with all the Thopters. Not much our opponent can do. Opponent attacks, sure. Block one. So yeah, normally we would keep comboing until we find our time save to take extra turns. Another Tarmogoyf is not gonna cut it. So we'll just untap and attack with everyone. And that should be more than enough. Alright, on to sideboarding against the Junt. This seems like a matchup where Tesseret's gonna shine. Could make a case for Witchbane Orb as it stops this card, but it's a bit too narrow, I think. Uh, anything else that stands out? That a Winter could be okay, uh, but of course they could see it coming with a Hand Disruption spell. So yeah, that of Winter is a consideration as well. What don't we like? I think it's gonna be a bit too difficult to assemble the Time Sief part of the combo. The Thopters themselves should be plenty, even their opponent is gonna have some ways to deal with the Graveyard as well. Nile Spellbomb seems fine as it shrinks Tarmogoyf, Cage isn't necessary. Pithing Needle can stop Planeswalker, so seems good enough. So what else are we cutting? And Snaring Bridge is also cuttable since their opponent's got plenty of ways to deal with artifacts. It's still potentially playable, but I think it's cuttable as well. Maybe the Pyrite Spellbomb, although it does kill their Confident or Scavenging Ooze if it doesn't have any plus one plus one counters. So yeah, not sure what the last cut should be. Maybe double Dead of Winter isn't necessary. We'll just bring in one. Alright, we're on the draw with the Fine Hand. We've got some of our combo pieces with Foundry and Engineer. Dead of Winter as removal. And Tazrat's a great pickup too. So no need to play the Mox Opal yet. So I guess we'll just play a Fetch Land. And this is probably just gonna grab a Steam Vents. Although, there is something to be said for just grabbing more snow permanents for the Dead of Winter, but we also want to fix our mana. It's gonna be a Collector Oof. Alright, well, that's pretty good. Stops all our activated abilities of artifacts, so that's why we want cards like Dead of Winter in this matchup. So, what are we fetching here? We just need two snow lands to kill the Collector here, so we don't necessarily need an additional one. I guess the Collector was also reason to maybe bring in the Aether Grid. Uh, could have been definitely a fine addition as well. Galvanic Blast could have also come in. Definitely forgot about a new addition here in the Jund decks. Yeah, we kind of want all the colored mana. Can of course fetch the Snow Covered Basics as well, the Mountain or the Swamp. But um, if we draw into a War of Invention, we want a lot of blue mana as well. So it's kind of tricky which land to get. I guess I'll just grab a Steam Vents for now. And then maybe the Polluted Delta can grab a Snow-Covered Swamp. So yeah, let's fetch up a Snow-Covered Swamp here. And then I guess we don't want to play the Engineer if we're planning to Dead of Winter next turn. So instead we'll just play the Foundry. And pass a turn. And then next turn we can go Island into Dead of Winter. A bit awkward that the Spire Bluff will come into play tapped. Alright, Scavenging Ooze, a bit of a graveyard hate, but now the Dead of Winter is looking great, as it can kill both creatures at once. 
So definitely going to pull the trigger here. And then I guess we'll just say go for now. Since our mock still doesn't tap for mana, so we can't run out Astrolabe. But then we're pretty close to Tezzeret, which is going to be pretty good as well. But it seems to be stuck on two. Tarmogoyf still pretty big here, 3-4. Another Astrolabe. So let's run out Astrolabe number one. See what we draw. Mishra's Bauble. So I guess I'll play another Astrolabe for now. Alright, Spell Bomb. And we'll just play Mox into Engineer. I could bobble myself to see what's on top. In case I don't want to draw it, I can shuffle it away with Engineer. And if I do want to draw it, I simply don't play the Engineer yet. But I think I want to be mana efficient and run out the Engineer anyway. So I'm probably just going to bobble the opponents. Probably should have done it before playing Engineer to get a bit more info. But that's okay. Probably just get a sword in the graveyard here. And then I guess I'll wait on the bobble in case they pick up some hand disruption. Although I doubt they would take anything other than Tezzeret with the Thoughtseize, but could be an Inquisition too. So we'll wait until their upkeep to bobble them. And our opponent's about to draw a forest, so they'll have a third land, but still no black mana. So next turn we could make some Thopters, we could run out Tezzeret. We've got a, a lot of options. Just take four for now. Draw from Bobble. Pick up Prismatic Vista. Alright, so where do we want to start? My guess is we fetch and then play Tezzeret. Get another island. See what's on top. And Pithing Needle. Bobble Wellspring. Bobble could have been a reason not to fetch yet. So Wellspring could be nice, Needle could also go after the opponent's fetch lands, although I'm not sure which one to name. Maybe like Bloodstained Mire. They're pretty far from playing any Planeswalker, like Liliana, I guess they could have Ren and Six. Or we could just Cantrip with a Bobble. I kind of like getting the Wellspring. We're not playing it this turn, but next turn we can play it, sacrifice it and draw some more cards. And then for now, probably just gonna make two Thopters with uh, the Foundry. Not going to use the Engineer, I don't think. Nothing to get back. So might as well attack for one. And then I guess we'll use a Foundry right away. Make some Thopters. So we'll pay one. Sack Astrolabe. Because we have the spare mana to play around Surgical as well. And if I want to play around Surgical, I shouldn't activate it again. Since we only have one mana available. So I think I'll just pass a turn. Although if they had Surgical, they probably would have Surgical Sword already at some point. Alright, Ancient Grudge, the Foundry. I've got another one in hand, so that's not too bad. But I guess now I'll make another Thopter while we can. And I guess I can sack the Foundry itself. So the sword doesn't go to the graveyard. Of course they can flash back Ancient Grudge as well. And we can just chump the Tarmogoyf with the Thopter token. Plus Engineer can also get back Foundry, so we've got a bit of redundancy here. So go if after Tesseract, we'll chump. Alright, Urza should lock things up here. So I guess we'll plus first, see what we get. Find another Foundry, not that we really needed it. We'll run out Urza. Can always use Astrolabe for mana fixing as well if we have to. But we can use the Engineer to get back the Foundry. Sacrificing the sword, I guess. Could have made one more blue mana first, but uh, should have plenty to work with here. And now Urza can make some mana. Can sacrifice Astrolabe to the Foundry to get back sword. Opponent's gonna attempt to kill the Foundry in response here, presumably, but then we can just sack something else and keep the combo going. So we can just make all the Thopters in the world again. Whoops, I did not mean to let the Ancient Grudge resolve here. Accidentally clicked through it, so... Now the Foundry is dead, so we should have been able to just make infinite mana and infinite Thopters in response. So, small misclick here, sadly. I think we'll still be fine. But now I no longer have the Astrolabe to make black mana to play the Thopter Foundry. 
So I guess we'll have to change plans a little bit, that's fine. But yeah, we would have won the game here basically. So we'll just play Wellspring. And draw a card. And I guess that works. So we'll play Mox Opal, which can make black mana. And then we can play another Foundry from hand and keep going. So we got saved by this Mox Opal top deck. But again, if we were playing this in paper, the game would have been over already. So this makes black. Urza makes blue. Play Foundry. Number two. And hopefully we won't make the same mistake. And our opponent finally packs it in. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And our hand seems... keepable enough. We've got two of our combo pieces here. Missing black mana to cast the Foundry, but we've got a bobble to cantrip. Guess we'll target our opponent here. And an oust on top, so blue-white control seems to be the deck or points on. There's also an argument for just using bobble in the points upkeep in case they're playing this card. Opponent just with a celestial colonnade on turn one. Sadly, we can go mine soon into astrolabe since this is a snow permanent. So I guess we'll just play the astrolabe, which can also then fix for black for the foundry next turn. All right, mountain on top. All right, opponent's got two mana up. Polluted Delta can also search up a swamp if we want to. So what's the plan? I guess we can play Mountain, play Mindstone, use Mindstone to make black mana to play Foundry. That seems fine. And then next turn we can play the Sword and start making some Thopters. Mox Opal as well. Alright, I guess we'll make some Thopters end of turn here. And then work and maybe get a time save, if that's what we need. And then we'll make some Thopters here. Alright, on top, not our land. Just attack for a bunch here. And then we can play at instant speed to play around the opponent's counter spells as well. Opponent taps out for fact or fiction. So now I think we can war for the time sieve and win the game basically. So it doesn't matter what we fetch, I'll get the uh, snow covered swamp. War for two. Get time sieve. And then sack five artifacts to take an extra turn. And then I'll make some more Thopters first, I guess. And then use time sieve. Sacrificing one, two, three, four, five. And we basically get to take infinite turns here. Doesn't matter how we split these piles. Opponent packs it in since they see what's happening. All right, that was a nice win against blue white on two sideboarding. So our opponent's on a pretty typical blue white control deck. So Tezzeret seems like a good addition. Opponent can have all sorts of graveyard hate and artifact hate. So they could even have Stony Silence, in which case the Aether Grid could be useful. Don't have much to bring in outside of Tazaret in this matchup. What don't we like? Ensnaring Bridge might not be necessary. It stops Colonnade, but we shouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, Gravdigger's Cage stops Snapcaster Mage, but that's pretty narrow. So the Spell Bomb is fine. 
Pyrite spell can maybe finish off a Planeswalker, Pithing Needle can stop a Planeswalker. Time save seems okay, like it's not amazing, but I think we can submit this basically. And we should be okay, the only one I'm not sure about is whether we want the Aether Grid against the potential Stony Silence, since that could be an issue otherwise, but then again we've got Tazeret, we've got Psy, and Urza itself is also kind of an alternate win condition if we just want to start attacking, so I think we're okay. And our opening hand seems okay. We'll keep. So we'll just fetch up a basic island here. Play a spell bomb. Next turn we can go Mind Stone into Spell Bomb into Mox Opal, which makes mana. Or we can just go Foundry into Mox Opal into another Spell Bomb. Opponent with an opt end of turn. Serum Visions. And the Goblin Engineer to draw. Let's just fetch up. Swamp seems fine. Don't really need to get the Snow Covered Swamp necessarily. I guess Watery Grave is fine for now, or Life Turtle's not in too much danger in this matchup. And I'll go with Spell Bomb into Mox Opal into Foundry. The upside of playing the Mind Stone is that we could have maybe played Tazeret next turn before our opponent gets Cryptic Command mana. Could have been worth it. Opponent's got a Teferi. Let's see if it bounces one of our artifacts. Bounces a Foundry, that's okay. Psy's a good draw. So I guess we'll just play Psy. Which can also help us pressure the opponent's Planeswalkers. And if we draw land we have Tazeret which also makes some 5-5s. Five the Tension Sphere goes after Psy, if they went after Nile Spellbomb we could have sacrificed one of them so that the other one wouldn't have gotten exiled. Land means we can just play Tazerat here, which seems like the play. Hope they don't have a Spell Pierce. Alright, Force of Negation, fair enough. Exiling Vendillion Click Opponent's down to one card in hand, so they don't have much going on. Although the Fairy Hero of Dominaria is a pretty good last card to have. Alright, we're in trouble now. The Fairy pluses. And we'll have to assemble something pretty quickly here. Of course, we do have Thopter Foundry, Engineer can find Sword, so we technically have all the pieces we need. The Fairy can mess that up a little bit. I guess I'll start with Foundry. Play around Mana Leak. Then play the Mind Stone. And then we can play Engineer. Which finds Sword. Could also go after Pithing Needle and try get that back from the graveyard next turn to shut down the Fairy. I think I would rather just get the Thopter Sword combo going. And this also doesn't get disrupted by the fairy bouncing the engineer. So we can start making some Thopter tokens. Let's see what interaction our opponent brings to the table here. Time Raveler is still plussing. And the fairy minuses on the foundry, fair enough. Astrolabe gives us a redraw. And Urza's a pretty good pickup. And we know that the next card is the Thopter Foundry, so let's go ahead and play Urza. Resolves. Now we can make blue mana with the Construct. We can filter that blue mana into black mana with the Astrolabe, and then sacrifice Spell Bomb to draw a card. Draw into the Foundry. And then I can play the Foundry right now. And our opponent scoops it up. Since we assembled a combo here, we can make infinite mana, make infinite Thopters, gain infinite life, and then cast our entire deck. And eventually find a Time C, for example, to take an extra turn and attack with all our Thopters. And our opponent only had one card in hand, so they didn't have any interaction. Alright, sweet. So. Some pretty quick games here against Blue-White Control, pretty atypical of the matchup, but uh, yeah, our deck showing a lot of resiliency to assemble the different combo pieces. 
Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine looking hand. So we'll keep. Let's see what we're up against. Flagstones, alright, so some sort of mono white martyr type deck. Turn 1, Nip, Gwillian. 1-1 one, one lifelinker for 1. Interesting. Alright, so let's uh, just use the Vista to get a Swamp, I think. And play the Spell Bomb. Next turn we can play the Foundry. Second Vista is probably going to get an Island as well. So red-white. And it's going to be Edge of Divinity. So it turns this into a 4-4 lifelinker, not bad. So we're under a bit of pressure. And Graph Digger Skate should draw, not exactly what we need right now. But it will still probably play it out just to make it uh, easier to improvise this War of Invention. Let's uh, just play the Thopter Foundry for now. Do need to make sure to have enough islands in play to help us play this War of Invention. It's triple blue, so that's why we have so many blue lands in the deck. But we still needed the black mana to cast the Thopter Foundry here and to draw a card if we ever want to sack the Spell Bomb. Opponent's got an effect end of turn here. It's going to be Apparition making a 1-1. Getting rid of our Prismatic Vista. Alright, so opponent with a pretty interesting hybrid color aggro deck here. Putting that Edge of Divinity to good use. And it's going to be Soul Eater. So it's got an ability to get plus one plus so if they pay two life or one red mana. So it plays pretty well alongside a big life linker. Opponent's got a pretty interesting brew on their hands. Gets in for five. But if Urza survives, we get to go off since we can then pretty easily war for the sword and we'll have our combo assembled. So for now, I guess I'll just play the snow covered island since our life total could matter. And then play a cage. Could also sacrifice these artifacts to the foundry to make some thopters if we wanted to. Gain a bit of life back, but I'll keep them in play for now. So yeah, we might have to make some blockers for this Soul Eater, otherwise this can threaten to deal a ton of damage. So I'm probably just gonna sacrifice the Graph Digger's Cage if they attack with it, but our opponent just sends the 4-4 uh, four, four here. Alright, I think we'll take it. And I could sacrifice a Spell Bomb right now, since we also get to draw a card with it. I guess it's pretty mana efficient to do so. So... We'll sack Spell Bomb and then go to the graveyard. And we can still pay the black mana to draw a card here. Alright, another war. So let's play the bobble first. Bottom does have three mana up, so they could have all sorts of interaction. Let's see what they have. Play Urza. Resolves. Make a construct. So we can whir at instant speed for the sword, and then we can tap the sword to start the combo, basically. So as long as your opponent has mana untapped, I don't feel the need to go for it first, since we've got a 5-5 blocker for this 4-4 as well now. So we could go for it end of turn, but I think I would rather untap and have access to more mana to potentially respond to any removal spell on Urza. So yeah, let's untap. Mox Opal helps. So we'll play the Mox, play the Vista, search up another Islands, and now we can pretty safely go for it since we'll have another war in response in case something goes wrong. So let's make a bunch of blue mana, we'll tap the cage, and then war for two, and find a sword. And now we can make mana with the sword itself to sack it to the foundry. Opponent's got a response. Back an apparition, trying to exile the sword, fair enough. So we can just respond by sacking another artifact here. So let's do that. Sack the cage, which will again trigger the sword before the apparition resolves. Could of course just war of invention for another sword, but no need to do it when we can Simply sacrifice another artifact. So sword returns. And again Urza can make a bunch of blue mana. And keep comboing off. 
And our opponent scoops it up. All right, so on to sideboarding against a black, white, red aggro lifelink combo deck, I guess we can call it. Galvanic Blast seems okay. We might want to switch up our win conditions a little bit and add Tazeret. Ether Grits could be fine. They've got a lot of one toughness creatures that this can kill. Uh, Dead of Winter seems okay. Don't think we need much else. So the only one I'm not sure about is whether we need Tazeret. Then what do we take out? Time Save is always cuttable. Sword is not great against the Apparition, but I think we still want to keep the combo to some degree. Cage and uh, One Nile Spellbomb can definitely be cut. I guess we could cut uh, Pithing Needle as well. I guess it stops the uh, activated ability on that one creature, so it does have a bit of utility in this matchup. I'm not sure if it's quite enough. I think I'll cut it and the uh, Nile Spell Bomb as well. Do still want to have enough cheap artifacts to make the deck function, but I think the other artifacts in the deck are going to be a little bit more useful. So we just added two Galvanic Blasts as more cheap removal. Ether Grid that can take down one toughness stuff pretty easily. And then Dead of Winter has another sweeper effect. And then basically cuts the Graveyard Hate artifacts as well as the Pithing Needle. I think that's reasonable. All right, we're on the draw with a pretty slow hand. Uh, two Urzas, a Whirr. But I think I'm still going to keep. We've got a Galvanic Blast for interaction. Bobbled, which we can maybe just cycle here. And then we just need to hit a couple land drops to help us cast uh, Urza, which seems pretty good in the matchup. So our opponent with a turn one Children of Corliss. All right, so that combos with that uh, creature that has the Phyrexian ability, since they can get all the life back that they sink into the ability. Don't think we need to Galvanic Blast the Children right now. So let's just, I guess we've got both our Shock Lands in hand. So I think I'll bubble myself first to see if we want to shuffle the top card or if we want to draw it. If we want to shuffle it, we can use Polluted Delta. If we want to draw it, we can just play a Shock Land instead. And there's another Mishra's Bobble on top. I don't particularly care to draw the Mishra's Bobble, but it's also not necessarily a bad draw, since it can give us another Scry next turn, basically, thanks to the Polluted Delta trick. So I think I'll play the Steam Vents. We could play it untapped, we could play it tapped, that's the only thing I'm not sure about. I think I'll just play it tapped for now, preserve our life total. Don't think we need to Galvanic Blast say Children right now, and I doubt our opponent's gonna enchant it with the enchantment we saw in the first game. So they attack us for one. And there's the Soul Eater. So that's kind of the combo with the children here, I guess. But we've got Galvanic Blast to get rid of the Soul Eater. So we'll bobble ourselves first. And Goblin Engineer on top. That's actually an okay draw, I think. So no need to pollute the Delta Shuffle. I'll just use Galvanic Blast on the Soul Eater right now. Prevent any shenanigans. And then play this tapped. We've got all the lands we need to cast Urza. Next turn we can play Engineer, maybe put a sword in the graveyard. And it also just gives us a blocker in case they have more Soul Eaters coming up. Martyr of Sands. So they do also have the Martyr in their deck. And a Mindstone, so we can go Mindstone into Engineer. Seems fine. And I think we just search up a sword here, even though our opponent could have back an apparition again. I'm not too upset since we've got a backup anyway. And then next turn we can play Urza, and we just need to search up the Thopter Foundry with the Whirl of Invention, and we'll have the combo assembled. Alright, size pretty decent too. And if they have interaction for Urza, we've got a backup. So I guess I'll fetch up a basic. Play Urza. Make a construct. And pass a turn. Don't quite have the mana to Whirr right now. But we can go for it next turn. And our opponent's not doing much. Mox Opal, so we can go... Sigh into Mox Opal, into Whirr. Seems decent. Get back Sword. And now 
we can war for x equals 2. And that's game. All right, so we were able to assemble our combo pretty consistently here. That's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.